Hello, welcome back to the channel. And this is Friday, so I'm continuing my solar journey, looking at how much power and energy I'm generating using solar panels and the savings I can make using that. So today I thought I'd look at what the difference in power generation or energy generation is on the shortest day in the UK, because the winter solstice was two days ago, and compare it to the longest day. Uh, which was back on the 21st of June. And those who've been following the channel knows there's a, I've got a slight problem with this, uh, but I'll come to that uh, later on. So, first of all, uh, the reasons why we have a solstice and why our length of days changed. So, we live on the planet Earth, which is an oblative spheroid, um, otherwise known as a squash sphere, or a ball that's been sat on. Um, and the Earth is orbiting around the Sun, and it takes 365 days for that to happen, or a year. Actually, it's just over 365 days, hence why we have a leap year every four years. Um, and also, the Earth is rotating um, at a... It's one rotation is roughly 24 hours. Again, there's a little bit of discrepancy in that. But let's keep it simple and say it rotates every 24 hours. But the key thing about our rotation is that the rotation is not, or is actually at an angle. So the axis the Earth rotates around is at an angle, which means that in the winter, the Northern Hemisphere, where we are here in Swansea, is actually tilted away from the Sun. So we're actually technically further away from the Sun than we are in the summer. And currently, um, continents in the Southern Hemisphere, such as Australia, are having their summer because they're tilted towards the Sun. As the Earth then rotates around the uh, or orbits around the Sun, when we come to the Northern Hemisphere summer, the um, our the uh, our country is close to the Sun, and therefore we get our summer. I should point out that the um, the closer we get to the North Pole or the South Pole um, depends on the length of daylight hours we're going or the number of daylight hours we have in the summer and in the winter and how it changes from day to day. So currently, um, in the, I think it's the village which is closest to the North Pole. My partner follows a TikTok account of a woman who lives in this village. Um, they are currently in polar night, um, or polar winter, um, where they will not have any sunshine for the next uh, for two and a half months. But in the summer, or the Northern Hemisphere summer, um, they pretty much have 24 hours of daylight. So, um, in the UK, where we're about halfway up the Northern Hemisphere, um, we get a, a different number of hours of daylight compared to people further north and further south. So, that's the reasons why we have different seasons and the number of hours of daylight we get varies throughout the year. So, as I said, the Winter solstice was uh, two days ago, and on that day, the sun rose in the UK at three minutes past 8 a.m. and set at 53 minutes past three, given a total a number of hours of daylight of seven hours and 50 minutes. Compare that to the summer solstice, which is the longest day, which was back on the 21st of June. The sun rose at 4.43 a.m., and uh, set at 9.21 p.m., giving 6 hours and 38 minutes of daylight. So the question is, how does this actually affect the solar generation? And this is where my supervisor comes through. Um, as you know, I only had my solar panels installed on the 24th of August. Um, so I'm going to have to, I'm using data from a few days after that. Um, and the graph that I'll be showing from that uh, date, which I think is the 27th, um, the sun rose at 6.20 a.m. and set at uh, 8.14 p.m. So there was just under 12 hours of total daylight then. But it gives quite a good comparison. It shows what happens when you have um, an equal, pretty much equal number of hours of daylight and nighttime in the UK. Um, obviously, if I did have the data from the uh, uh, summer solstice, there would actually be a couple of extra hours of gener uh, generation, or 
actually close to four hours of gen or over four hours of generation more anyway these are the two graphs I've tried to scale them so they are the same so you can see them directly over each other but as you can see in the summer we get a lot more generation so the total um, number amount of energy generated in the summer this year on this day was 26 kilowatt hours um, while the data from two days ago we generated eight kilowatt hours so three times less um, so there are a number of reasons for this um, first of all winter we get um, worse weather so you can see that um, from the graphs we have a lot more drop-offs in power generation which is when clouds were going over we are further away from the sun so we get less power hitting us so the intensity is less um, also just the number of hours of daylight has an effect so yesterday we started generating uh, electricity so that's when the graph starts picking up from that zero baseline at 10 minutes past nine and by 10 to 4 we weren't producing any more so you know there was uh, we only had about 6 hours and 50 minutes of generation yesterday compare that to the um, summer when we started generating uh, just after 7 a.m. so this is the uh, time in August we generated, started generating just after 7 and that generation went all the way through till 8 o'clock so we had 11 hours of generation then so that makes a huge difference to the amount of energy you can produce and it also shows the importance of being able to store that energy and uh, be able to use it through the night um, if we were um, generating on that uh, summer solstice as I say we expect to get some extra generation um, in the morning and in the night probably an extra couple of hours of generation there another reason for the uh, lower generation in the uh, summer and you can really look at this from the actual maximum amount of power we were generating so yesterday we touched just over three ki uh, kilowatts at its peak while in the summer we were up to the maximum pretty much the maximum of what our uh, panels can produce uh, which is 4.6 uh, kilowatts and the reason for that is not only the sun is further away but it also sits low in the sky so the angle isn't as good for generating so this is the real difference between summer and uh, winter generation I did a video a couple of weeks ago which has already had over 2500 views where um, I posed the slightly clickbaity title of our solar panels worth it in the winter but it was basically looking at my generation through November and you can see how at the end of that video how little solar generation we had in November compared to say September it was roughly half the amount and these are the reasons why it's because of the much shorter daylight hours the height of the sun in the sky and just the distance from the sun and also the uh, the general weather is normally more cloudy in the winter anyway hope you found that informative um it's only a few days till christmas so merry christmas hope you have a new year and i'll see you in another video very soon